I'll switch. Here, I'll switch you. No, no. You're, this is the way it's supposed to be. You're supposed to be like that. Here. No, 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 no. Go ahead and call the uh, May 20th council meeting to order. If everyone would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance. Are there, well, welcome to everybody. I'll ask if there are any announcements to be made. We have a full agenda, so we're gonna try and keep things moving pretty quickly here tonight. Seeing none, we'll move on to the proclamations. Unfortunately, we are not, at least at this time, provided with a proclamation, so I guess the best we can do is at least recognize that we're, unless uh, someone has those? No? Nope, I do not have them. Okay. Does anyone? Nope. Uh, oh well. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't print them out, so we've been spoiled that we've normally had them with us. But in any event, we wanted to recognize the Mental Health Month of 2019. Uh, secondly, the National Public Service Week, uh, and thirdly, a National Gun Violence Awareness Day proclamation. So those are the three that we're recognizing. Presentations. Uh, first, Citizens Government Academy. Is there someone that's going to be? Uh, thank you. Hi, Sarah Sanquist, Director of Parks and Recreation. Uh, tonight, I am up here to uh, honor and congratulate the newest class of Fisher City Government Academy. Uh, Fisher City Government Academy is a program that gives citizens an inside look at how local government operates. They learn about everything from how our city court operates to how DPW keeps roads clear during winter storms and uh, participates in the series of classes taught by departmental leaders and experts over the course of several weeks. It's a significant time commitment and these participants are a phenomenal example of, for others looking to be more engaged with their local community. Uh, some of our government, government Academy alumni have gone on to do great things in and for Fishers. This includes serving as part of the Fishers Government Academy Association alumni group who actually uh, helped organize uh, potluck uh, this, um, out in the lobby prior to this graduation and has ongoing uh, volunteer commitments with the city, uh, working on boards, commissions, serving on city council, and uh, even co-founding Launch Fishers. Uh, so, without further ado, Mayor Fadness, if you can join me uh, to present our new graduates. New graduates, I'll call your name, and when you come up, please shake the mayor's hand, and then we'll line up for a photo, and then we'll go out to the lobby for additional pictures. Charlie Ang, Nancy Bartolik, Jackie Bowen, Rosie Cerrone, Eric Cervone, sorry, that's maybe a V, Amir Brando Corsario, Vicki Kreider, Will Eldon, Andrea Eldon, Bryant Avarian, Chuck Farmer, Liana Fedor, Tim Gago, Troy Goley, Clifford Heckman, Calvin Hare, Mike Irwin, Michael Johnson, Nikki Lindsay, Connie McConnell, Jim McConnell, Jean Mencius, Joseph Patterson, Libby Porter, Michael Porter, Matthew Rapp, Sheila Seward, and Jack Slabby. Thank <laughs> you. 
right, I'm pleased to present these 28 graduates of the spring 2019 class. Rich, I want to recognize the Alumni Association as part of the Government of Canada does a number of volunteer things. They continue to be a part of our community. So I appreciate all their efforts. So thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> okay, next is Tever Ball Dental, the Peruvian Business of the Year by the Peruvian Association of Central Indiana. Is there someone here? Is there anyone recognizing this? Organization. Oh, very good. Okay, I'm going to take this one. Deanna Teverbaugh is um, a resident in Fisher. She and her husband actually own two businesses here. Teverbaugh Dental is one of those, and Deanna was just named the uh, her dental practice the Peruvian Business of the Year by Central Indiana's organization. We're really proud to have her representing us so well in Fishers. So this is a Community Achievement Award. On behalf of the mayor and the city council, if we can have Deanna come up. Can the Peruvian government make, have a, a, a field trip for the council? Rich, do you want to oh. come? All right, well next up, uh, the next presentation is for the Fishers High School Color Guard, world and state champions. Yes. That's world. very that impressive. World championships, yes. Wow. Yeah, that was this past April. State championships was in March. They went to world championships this April, and they did it. They won. They are top awesome. of open class, yeah. Where were the world championships? Here in the state? World, yeah, it's here, and lucky for us, it's here in Dayton, Ohio, so okay. very close by to us. But there really are groups. They're coming from Japan. They come from the Netherlands. They come from England. Wow. Um, in the high school division, which is the one they're in, so they're scholastic and independent. They're in scholastic, which is high school. Um, it is mostly places from the nation, but they're all over the place. They're from California, from Florida, from Texas, all over the just nation, all over the world, technically. So, and here they are. They are the champions. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> No, so these guys are comprised of, oh my gosh, Walkana, raise your hand. She is an eighth grader. <laughs> she is an eighth grader. So if they are pretty exceptional and just like where they are with Color Guard, with their achievements in Color Guard and where they stand, um, we do sometimes challenge them if they can uphold to it. And oh my gosh, has this girl done it? So she is on a team with everyone else here it is comprised of freshmen through seniors at Fishers High School. So... An amazing 22 inspiring young adults. Most definitely. Our, our next group is also world and state champions. 
the Fishers High School Percussion Ensemble. Good evening, my name is Chad Kohler, Director of Bands at Fishers High School, and first I want to give a shout out to our Color Guard. We are so proud of them. Not only do they do what they do in the winter, but they also support the marching band that you hear us on our football fields, and you'll hear us pretty soon marching through Spark Fishers, so we're excited to be a part of that again this year. In front of you are some of the members from the Percussion Ensemble from Fishers High School. They won their second national title this past April, back-to-back -back world championships, also at the WGI Championships in Dayton, Ohio. And they are uh, a state championship for Indiana Percussion Association and an eight-time state champion at Fish at, for uh, Indiana Percussion Association. And so I think, I think that's the most state championships at, that we have at Fishers High School, but certainly proud of all the other groups that we have there as well. The unique approach to this year is we took a multi-ethnic uh, approach to our show. We included a Amadinda, which is a Ugandan xylophone, which we built from scratch. So we were multidisciplinary in our approach. We uh, dove into physics, mathematics, and acoustic engineering. And we literally made our own bars and uh, assembled on them onto frames. And they were able to bring uh, that multicultural approach to our ensemble and our performance. And uh, just extremely proud of them. So your Fishers High School Percussion Ensemble. Well, thank you and congratulations again to all of you. Uh, Finance Committee report. John? Uh, thank you, Rich. Uh, thanks for the, uh, the Finance Committee recommend for consideration this evening on um, the consent additional item 6D, request to approve transfer of funds. Uh, item 10, request to appropriate additional certified technology park funds to the City of Fishers 2019 municipal budget. Item 11, request resolution of Common City Council to provide lease between the Redevelopment Commission, Fisher's Town Hall Building Corporation, and item 12, the uh, request to approve an ordinance authorizing the issuance of City of Fisher's taxable economic development revenue bonds. In addition, uh, we had some other discussion in our meeting. Uh, first one, budget season is coming pretty soon, so we're gonna have to go through that process. We'll start, uh, hopefully starting to see some numbers along that here pretty soon here in the next probably 45 to 60 days. Uh, lastly, um, our audit firm, BKD, is working on our audit action I'm meeting with the audit partner here in the next uh, week and a half to talk about where we're at in the audit process. So uh, that is what's uh, happening in the Budget Finance Committee meeting. Thank you, John. Thank you. All right, item six, consent agenda. Is there a motion? Second. Motion by Pete, second by Eric. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Item seven, uh, case R052, 019D. Oh, just that one's still me. Are you going to combine? Yes. Okay, very good. If that's all right. Yep. Uh, for the record, Megan Baumgartner, Director of Economic Development for the City of Fishers. Um, tonight we have the two final steps for the crew car wash new corporate headquarters that they're going to be constructing um, along Exit 5 Parkway and 116th Street in Fishers. We brought this to council last mm -hmm. month um, as, a, again, a, an exciting new corporate headquarters project, somewhere between a 40 and 60,000 square foot new office building um, that will also house some of their manufacturing and research that they do for their facilities. Crew has plans to expand their footprint not only in Indiana, but also nationally. So um, they're also exploring some really cool opportunities with the IoT Lab, so this is a great project for us. The two items tonight, um, the first is the resolution approving, is that the first one? Um, one is a resolution approving their statement of benefits. Um, this was included as an attachment in last month's exhibit or item as well. Um, it 
explains their different investments that they planning, uh, plan on making to their corporate headquarters, so at least $6 million, um, as well as retaining 33 existing employees um, and then their salary information. Um, this is a 10-year, 100% real property tax abatement only for their corporate headquarters. Um, the other item is the final step of the economic revitalization area with a confirmatory resolution and a public hearing on that item as well. Happy to answer any questions about either of these. Okay, this is a public hearing. Are there any? Oh, Steve? Oh, no. Okay. Thank you. So uh, this is a public hearing. If there are members of the public that wish to speak, you'll be given three minutes. Uh, are there any members of the public that wish to speak? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Questions of counsel? No, I just got a couple of quick comments. I mean, you know, the, the process that this undertook, you know, throughout the time and, you know, when I first sat down with Bill and, and Steve and everybody else and kind of went through the iteration of, of the crew car watch. And then of course, it, it took a couple twists and turns here and there. And, and, and I think in, to show exactly how Fishers continues to work, is I think we took a good project and we made it a great project in the long term, is really what it came out. And I think the, the way that, that uh, particularly Steve and his group at Fagery work and kind of get us involved in this thing and get the input and then works with the, the staff and the, and the staff was great throughout the entire process as well. You know, we came out with a project that, in my opinion, is a flagship project for Fishers. And, and it's in the correct location, and it's the correct type of investment, and, and we're bringing a, a, a really a great business, and we're giving them a flagship spot, and, and so they can get a lot of, uh, of, of viewership as to what they're doing. And, the, and they're putting really a big stake in the ground here in Fishers. I want to compliment the mayor and his team for doing all the work on that side, and also the staff, which went along there. And Steve and your client, I, I think it turned out just absolutely terrifically. And I, I couldn't be more pleased with, with everything there. And there's no other comments. I'm going to make a motion to approve. Any other comments? So motion's been made. Is there a second? Second, second by who? John. John, thank you. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. And abstain. Oh, one abstention. Yep. Thank you. And then we go ahead and do item number eight as well, Rich. Yeah, so we'll go, I'll make a motion to approve. Approve item number eight. Second. Uh, motion made by Pete, second by Eric. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And one yep. abstention? Abstain. Okay. Very good. And then Thank I'll you. make a motion on item number nine for the tax abatement. I have uh, a question on, yep. the, on that item. Um, I was looking at through some of the uh, CF1s on the tax abatement. One, Bisoncrup that we're recommending for approval, even though we don't have the jobs. Was there any incentives? There was 150 jobs that they put down their SB1, am I, am I correct? Yes, so and with with ThyssenKrupp, they have until I believe December 31st of 2020 to be able to reach their headcount requirements. Okay. Are there any incentives that we've provided that we've given an, uh, on that 150 job count or are we just giving incrementally as they add jobs? So part of that, that project, state. right, um, as part of that project agreement, we true. gave them $50,000 of cash for tenant improvement um, improvements to their facility. As long as they hit their employment numbers by 2020, so next year, then there aren't any sort of clawbacks. But we do have a pretty, I think that even in the clawback for that provision, we had some sort of interest if they didn't meet the headcount requirement. Okay. The reason I asked that, because their press release only said 70 jobs, not 100. I went through and found their press release on them coming to Fishers. Is there intent to get to 150? Is that is that what they're talking about? Is yes. there more expansion? Yes. It looks like they're meeting all the, the equipment and technology yeah. acquisitions. They've met that and hit the ball out of the park. And sometimes with technology, you don't need as many people. So if that's the case, I understand. But just sure. want to be clarified that we're not paying for, we have not given them incentive for 150 jobs when in fact there's only 60 some jobs. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, and so there's a couple of others um, that were a little bit lower. Republic is in the same situation where they are continuing to ramp up um, and they have, I believe, until 2025 to actually meet their employment numbers. And then Jardin, or Hearth, it's Hearthmark now was Newell Brands. They are also under on their numbers. Um, we have a statement in the um, CF1s that we've been working closely with them. They've kind of been reshuffling some of the warehouse workers with some of the office users and workers there. Um, so we are gonna continue to monitor that one, but 
we don't have any sort of concerns about the long-term numbers of employment here and um, again have let them know to please keep us up to date but we are still recommending tonight uh, that they are all approved again the only reason i bring up is just to make sure we give incentives i want to make sure that they follow through and follow what rules we gave them and everything that with with respect to that's coming to fruition absolutely okay I'm satisfied. So, yep. thank you, John. My, uh, motion still stands. I'll motion. second it. <laughs> okay, motion by Pete, second by John. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Item uh, 10, R052019E. Hi, Lisa Bradford, City Controller. The item before you, item number 10, the request to appropriate additional certified technology park funds for the 2019 municipal budget. When we did the 2019 municipal budget, as uh, was mentioned earlier, we start really early. So in June and July, we projected about 650,000. However, we don't receive our certified tech park distribution until December. So our budget was well into DLGF before we received our actual 18 distribution, which was almost a little over 950,000. So with that funding, we are able to meet 100% of our lease obligations uh, in the, with the Certified Technology Park Fund. So we're just asking for additional funding to meet all of those requirements. Rich, this so does that does public, public hearing as well. Yeah. This does, okay, yes. Mm -hmm. It wasn't bold, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is a, an item requiring a public hearing. If there are members of the public that wish to speak, you'll be given three minutes, and if you'd state your name and address for the record. Are there any members of the public that wish to speak? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Second. Uh, motion made by Eric, second by Pete. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Also, great job. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Collect more money than we budget or we anticipate. Yeah. It's always a good thing. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, what are we on to? 11. 11. R052019F. 11. All right, the item before you is a resolution uh, approving the lease between the Fishers Redevelopment Commission and Fishers Town Hall Building Corporation with respect to SPF 15. And so this specifically relates to the south side of the 116th project. And this is bonds not to exceed 15 and a half million related to land acquisition, demolition, infrastructure, the parking garage. The plan f is for this piece of the bond will be um, paid through the TIF revenue and through the increment. It does have the property tax backup. And as we've discussed in prior meetings, the property tax backup is simply a backup. It's not um, the funding source we will use to pay the debt service. And as we've also covered with the TIF bonds, the school still gets their refer referendum amount. They are not losing on this new growth. So even with the TIF bonds, the school still gets that referendum amount. Do we have any questions? Questions for Lisa? Just, just a comment that, mm -hmm. that that backing just gives us more favorable uh, treatment in the marketplace and yes. there's a there is a developer agreement in place correct yes that will that there's a minimum a minimum agreement that mm -hmm. we are covered so yeah. uh, good just to make sure one's aware of that thank you mm -hmm. yeah, motion to approve second motion, motion by pete second by john all in favor aye, aye. opposed very good thank you lisa all right item uh, 12 h all right, this is a request to approve an ordin ordinance authorizing the issuance of the taxable economic development revenue bonds. This is a continuation of an item that we had uh, last month, which um, entered into the lease and pledged the uh, lit backup. So this is for the north side of the 116th Street project. And again, it's the land acquisition and garage. And as is mentioned, the initial plan is to use um, bands, which are bond anticipation notes, and then to go out with the permanent financing. So these have all been approved by the Town Hall Building Corp and the Redevelopment Commission. The Economic Development Commission met uh, today and held their public hearing. We had no uh, comments on this. Um, and if there are no questions, I'd ask that we suspend the rules and pass on first reading. Are there any questions? Motion to suspend the rules. Motion Second. by Pete. Yes, to suspend the rules. Second by Todd. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Motion to approve. Second. All right, motion to approve by Pete, second by Todd. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? One abstention. Uh, one abstention. Thank you. Rich, before we move on, I see some Boy Scouts in the audience. Uh, perhaps oh. they could uh, oh, come up and introduce themselves when we're done. Okay, thank you. When we're done with the council. When yeah. we're done. Oh, no. Yeah, I bring them up now if you don't have to sit through the whole meeting. All right, very good. Someone get to introduce them or? Uh, if they would just want to come up oh, to the Boy Scouts so they can earn their badge, just come up. So how, how many Boy Scouts are in the audience? Come on up, guys. We can sign forms, is that general? Well, they come up oh, and they uh, say what school they're oh, from I and see. what badge you're working on. Whatever. Yeah, okay, so if you'll come up and introduce yourself, you may have to bend that microphone down. You might say what badge you're working on and where you go to school. You got it. Uh, hi, my name is Lou Stricker. And you go to school where, Lou? I go to school at Riverside. Very good. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ian Harney, and I go to Riverside at uh, school, um, Riverside uh, Intermediate, and Right now I'm working on um, citizenship in the community, right? And, uh, si and uh, communication. Awesome. Very, All right. very good. Good job, guys. Good job, guys. Thank you. Thank you. You can probably hustle home and finish your homework. I know that's what you want to do. Well, they want to wait, make sure they go to the finish <laughs> Oh, yes. All right, next uh, item 13031819. <laughs> Get their ice cream bag, yeah. huh? Good evening, Council. <laughs> Lindsay Bennett, Assistant City Attorney. I'm here for a third reading of this ordinance. Finally got that one last change put in there and um, the definition of weeds and other rank vegetation. Number seven, it now says grasses and other, and, I'm sorry, grasses or landscape intended to provide a teeing ground, fairway, rough, controlled and maintained tether, hazard, or putting area for a golf course that's in operation. So I think we've got a pretty solid ordinance now um, that we can enforce this summer. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Questions, yeah, Council? Sure, no problem. It's my pleasure. I, I know it ended up being more protracted. I appreciate your <laughs> understanding and diligence. <laughs> I'll well, make a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second by second. David. Uh, motion made by Pete, second by David. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you. Thanks, Lindsay. <laughs> yeah. Um, item 14, um, I know Eric was concerned that the Boy Scouts may want to have an interest in this particular well, case. For the record, I'm Andrew McGee, uh, Planner One for the City of Fishers. Um, I'm here to present to you tonight a resolution R05 2019B. Um, so this request is to consider an exemption from the UDO, the Unified Development Ordinance, um, to allow farm animals for educational purposes um, at HSE schools. So the reason that we are bringing this tonight is previously, um, a few years ago, uh, before council um, was a request to exempt chickens uh, for uh, one of the elementaries, um, we followed that up with a uh, amendment to the UDO to allow the director uh, to approve other fowl animals. Um, however, at the time, we didn't include farm animals uh, in general. So um, specifically, currently, um, Riverside Intermediate is looking to add a goat to their current uh, chicken, I don't know what you call it, chicken coop area. Um, so in order to have that goat, we need to exempt them from the UDO. Um, this is just an exhibit with what the school is proposing uh, currently. Um, they just want to have one goat uh, with an included shelter um, on the back of the school on the north side. Um, but again, uh, this is just their plan. This is the only thing we know of uh, that they're wanting to do, but we're hoping to prevent recurring repetitive requests for other various animals uh, if it comes up. Um, the department does have the ability to review whatever specific plans that the school would be doing moving forward um, with any other animals or in any other school locations. Um, so staff recommends that uh, council approves this resolution as presented 
you have any questions, I can answer them for you. Yeah, I have a couple questions. So I don't necessarily have any problem with this, but you know, and I'm not going to say as a teenager or high schooler that I didn't go try to tip over a few farm animals in my day. But where is the security right, right for this if it's out in the open that you know is going to let whatever farm animal out because we don't know what animals are going to be mm -hmm. right are they going to be in an enclosed building that's going to be locked Wh who's going to be in charge of making sure that they're treated correctly because i don't want any accusations coming back to the city <laughs> and or the schools yeah. for unfair treatment and I, I don't know if goats are solitary animals or they like buddies so you know what i mean <laughs> i saw so all those things come into play what is the, the plan around having the farm animals and who's really going to take ownership of that at the school so so this it's a great learning experience. Right. I mean, this our, our mayor over here, you know, had some dealings with some yeah. cows, I think, growing up, but we'll let him talk about um, it. Well, specifically, the request, the request for the good at Riverside um, came to us from their principal, uh, Dana uh, Kaminsky, I believe. So, I mean, ultimately, she has confidence in their program moving forward that they can handle having a goat in addition to the chickens. Um, so, I, you know, we don't have any uh, concerns that there would be we an issue with animal treatment. Beat, and they seem quite <laughs> All, I, all I'm saying is, is that, you know, uh, the, you know, kids will be kids and, mm -hmm. you know, we need to have some sort of plan <laughs> to make sure that they're well taken care of if they're going to be in a, in a taxpayer I think, entity. Yeah. I, think I think it would be in the school's best interest that that occurs anyhow, um, I, I regardless disagree. of what. I, you know, my, my worry there is that sometimes <laughs> that people forget that the schools are the schools and the city is the city. And while we work very closely and, and well together, mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that there's a plan in place that someone is going to take ownership of that. And to make sure if there's any state, federal kind of guidelines that need to be happen, someone's going to be able to do that. Because you guys don't do that, as I know of, in our city to make sure you know what those guidelines are. So I just want to make sure that somebody knows and someone's going to follow. Yeah. Was there a no, – so when we, when we went through this with the chicken coops, because um, I, I think we did it in various schools with the chicken coops, there was – they each school came and presented their plan and how they're going to take care of – that's – so to Pete's point – so we knew exactly what was going to happen instead of just, you know, something saying, hey, we're having chickens, you know. So we saw the, the progression. They right. gave a presentation of how they're going to take care of them, who's going to take care of them when school's out, mm -hmm. you know, is just sit there. I'm sure they have a plan, okay. Um, and then th is this specific just one goat, or, is, or are we proving something where there's multiple? <laughs> well, the, the resolution as written is to allow farm animals at the schools. So that is any as farm written. animal. Currently, as written, if they wanted to have a different farm animal, then yes, that would be. And how many? Like, is it one farm animal? Is it ten? Is it twenty? Here, here's my. I, I, I think, don't have the answer to that. And, I mean, and I I, want, I, I'm I'm with Pete. I'm not opposed to this. I just want. We, we, it's just you want to be careful. You don't do something and end up with a result. You're wait a minute. This wasn't the intention, and now well, all the of a yeah, we've and got the the going forward, the Department of Planning and Zoning can still review their plan. So if we don't think that you know, if we think there's a different issue, if there's a noise issue, they would still have to be held responsible to that. If there's an animal welfare issue, um, which again we don't normally get into, there, there are still statutes to relating to how you have to keep an animal. So I don't think you know we're going to have an issue with that. But so Pete, you don't want it to be a goat rodeo, right? So right. the, the, big, the bigger question was, do you want to trust staff with this review or do you want to see it every time? We were trying to exempt you from the review and leave it with staff to review what we feel is comfortable and approve and work with the schools on our own. If that's not the case, we can bring each one back and just approve tonight for this go motion one go at Riverside. <laughs> Here's, motion approved. I'm here, a motion. Here, Tony, and I, and I understand what you're saying. So now that we're, we're going to pull all that responsibility back to staff, which I think you're entirely capable of doing, now, if something happens to those animals, it falls back in the city's lap, in Chris's lap, right? If they have a horse, if they have a bull, if they have four cows that stomp over and they start going on the street and it creates chaos running down the middle of 116th Street in some stampede because they're animals, plural, right? Then if we're the ones approving what pens they're in, what positions they're in, where they're at, I just want to make sure that we have some level of review that is based on something. Right. I think, I, I, think I, I trust you guys to do that, but understand that, that, that that's going to pull it back up. So I, I would just tell you that there's absolutely precedent for how and the way that we're talking about this. So today there is zoning that would allow for animals in fishers currently. And what their job is to decide what zoning and what, what parameters you put that around in terms of use. So if you only want them to have certain access to certain farm animals, so be it. You can pass that in some sort of guidelines and rules. 
I don't believe you want to get into the blessing or approval or disapproval of their operational components because once you start doing that, then you are actually taking a partial ownership in that activity. What I would recommend is if you want to talk about buffers, if you want to talk about the types of animals they can have, all of those things, put those parameters in place and then allow staff to approve the use. But as for the operations of whatever it is they're going to do, I would stay out of that, and if issues arise, then it is exclusively the purview of the schools to solve that problem. I, I don't disagree, Scott. I 100% agree with what you're saying. So, you know, again, and, and I think there is just some standard, which you're alluding to, that these things have to be operating underneath because it is rather broad now, right? It's a very broad statement. Well, and if the language Not that, that I want to have it on every council meeting. I'm sorry I'm making such a big issue. No, 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 but if the language is too broad that they've proposed, then let's talk about revising that language and bringing it back if we want to see some amendments to the to that effect that narrows it down um, I think that's a conversation um, that we can absolutely have well can I can I ask them but then potentially to do a little bit more investigation there to make sure whatever we're going to approve that is reasonable to let them come back with some ideas of what kind of farm animals we one over there? Yeah, what I would suggest is approve the one tonight for the just one goat at Riverside, and then we're going to be working on a cl code cleanup for the UDO this summer, and I can incorporate some language for schools around some parameters with certain number of animals and buffer yards and all that into the code and just have it part of the unifying development ordinance. So, so did you, what, a goat tonight. I just want to make sure. So Riverside I, is asking I asked for that the, earlier, so right. we're, this is not specific to one goat, right? Well, well if I if we approve right. this tonight, that's we, we not specific to one goat. We can modify with motion, right? Can't. Uh, sure. I know it sounds ridiculous. I, that I, we're this this is not the case that I, I thought <laughs> might get a lot of. No, 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 <laughs> let me let me ask you this: Is it timely that the goat be approved tonight? School's about out. Does it matter that it's approved tonight? Is it, I don't know if anyone here from Riverside. They, they are. Five goats. Let's get the, the scouts. You guys have to have the answers here. You're from Riverside. <laughs> from from my conversations um, <laughs> with the principal, they are working to apply for a grant. Okay. Um, and this approval is, is they're, they're oh, waiting no, on this, see. but I don't know what their timeline is past that. So, so you could where are, I mean, I hate to sound really rude here, but I'm just going to say it. Where are they tonight then? I mean, if this is important and you're trying to get a grant and there's questions that we have, I don't understand. I, I, I don't understand this. Well, there's so. probably an anticipation that this wouldn't. Be uh, generate probably the question or dialogue that we're having here, which is fine. That's something that oftentimes we communicate at times and say, hey, we don't think this will probably be a big deal. We can take care of this. I think what we could do is have a, I, I would imagine that we could hold off 30 days on this GOAT approval. <laughs> and then also, I think in that same 30 days, we could come back to you guys with a set of kind of rules and regulations for the schools to live by around this issue that would allow staff then to say, okay, you, you're living within the confines of these rules. We can go ahead and review your plan and approve it. If it's above and beyond that, then it's gonna have to come back to the council and you're gonna have to review it and, and make a, a further suggestion. Does that work for everybody? I, I'm okay with modifying it today to make it a goat, okay, <laughs> so that they can do their grant application, which I understand in a lot of ways, you need to have a municipality take action on zoning to allow them to do a grant submission. So I'm okay with that, but I would like to make sure that we got our arms around just understanding what we're saying and how many and how big and everything else. So I would change the, the ordinance or whatever this is. Is it an ordinance? It's a resolution. Uh, no, or ordinance. Nope, that's weeds and vegetation. It's a request. It's yeah. So Good. I would just change it to say one goat for this evening and allow them their goat. To Riverside, too. <laughs> to right? Riverside. Yeah. Right, is that intermediate or elementary? It's intermediate. Intermediate, okay. So that would be my motion to approve a goat at Riverside Intermediate. And I'll second that motion. Along I mean, that's reasonable just to get through. Directing staff to come back in 30 days with a broader interpretation outline. There, there hasn't been any problems with chickens for the last few years. No. Yeah, chi no. Chickens don't stamp feed problems. Pete, I thank you for your thoroughness <laughs> here in this review. <laughs> uh, but a motion's been made. Oh, oh sorry, additional Did, comment? No, no. Yeah. I'm going to vote no just because I think we need the time to go through it because you bring up some good points because, I mean, Scott, you're a country kid. I'm a country kid. And there's a big difference between chickens that are in a confined area, yeah. but this is a different type it of is. animal. Yeah. And I think it just needs a little bit more review. Would, so yeah. if we want to vote on it, that's fine. I, I agree with Pete and David <clears throat> as well. I'm not right, comfortable do you want to suspend your motion, making Pete? this decision yeah. tonight. I'll suspend the motion, make a Sus motion to table. 
Aye. Second. Second. So motion has been made to table. Second by John. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We'll Very circle good. back with the goats. It doesn't have any hard feelings about this. It's really more of a policy issue than it is about the individual. Goat All right, thank you. That was Thanks. not the case that I thought might get the most <laughs> conversation. You never know. It's the third on, on these annexations. All right, item uh, 15041519. Pete points out these. this is a third reading. Correct. Uh, <clears throat> good evening for the record. Ross Hillary, Planner 2, City of Fishers. Uh, before you tonight, you have Ordinance 041519, which is the third reading of College Park Church annexation. A little background for you. Uh, College Park Church me, is located. Ross, let me stop you because I don't, I don't want to just do this to belabor it. Third reading. Is anybody have any questions about the third reading of a voluntary annexation on the church property at 126th Street in Hamlin Southeastern? Uh, then I'm going to make a motion to approve. Okay. Motion approved by Pete. Second by Todd. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sorry, Aye. Ross. I want to take away your thunder. Oh. No thunder. It's all right. Did you? Oh. Okay. Um, the second one is also a third reading. Correct. At uh, 041519A. Yes, that property is located at 14880 yeah. East 96th Street. I'll make a motion to approve that one as well. Motion by Pete. Second. Second by John. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Thanks, Ross. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, Ross. Spent more time on the goats. Now, if you were talking about goats, you'd have more opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Item 17041519C. Uh, good evening. For the record, Tony Bogato with the uh, Planning Department. Uh, Going to pull up. This was the rezone that was here last month, and it was continued after some discussion. And just want to follow up quickly where we are. So this was a rezone from C1, uh, residential to C1, went through plan commission and received a favorable recommendation. Uh, but there was some <laughs> concerns by plan commission member and council member Pete Peterson. And this item was zone residential, and this is the area shown today, off of 126th Street before Oleo Road. The comp plan does show that area is residential as well, but I want to highlight, you know, the comp plan for this area was not studied by the land use committee. It wasn't studied to that there was a specific intent to main residential or commercial. It was residential today, and so the thought was just leave it residential in the sense that it wasn't, it wasn't studied beyond that. Um, but since that time, we have planning staff as well as the deputy mayor. We've talked about and with the mayor uh, plans for how to handle these um, homes that are surrounded by subdivisions and other development that are um, over time, what's their highest and best use and how to accommodate those. And we've seen, you know, with new builds on 116th Street, some new offices go up with residential character. And so there's some thought about uh, creating a master plan around that and creating PUDs going forward for rezoning um, architectural standards for either new builds or maybe to modify the existing home. The proposal for you, before you today is for a home um, that's been purchased to be operated as a Remax. As you can see in the street view here, this home is um, pretty far back from the street, and there's a lot of uh, landscaping that screens the home. So even though the existing home is a little uh, worn down, the owner is going to be rehabbing the home and enhancing the existing architecture. Um, but it's already screened, and all this landscaping will remain. We also met with this owner and the adjacent owner who is uh, going through a rezone process for our state farm, and we've talked to them about combining one driveway to have one commercial driveway to limit points of access between the two developments as they move forward, and that's been as a result of the comments from uh, Councilmember Peterson and looking at the transportation for this area and how, how to move forward. Again, briefly, this is the existing home in the picture there on the left, and then some architectural rendings. There will be an expansion to the back of the home, so again, nothing to the front where that landscaping will remain. And then from the kind of what we looked at a planning standpoint is the traffic in these parcels we identified over time that are currently used for residential could potentially become office. So we have some ways to deal with this um, in working with A&F and looking at the traffic, traffic uh, trips count. There would be uh, there wouldn't be significant trips added for commercial use uh, for either medical or, or professional, but we do believe going forward professional office is the use we would recommend for this area. We wouldn't recommend medical. And so as a condition of tonight with the straight zone C1, you could add a condition to keep this professional office. Uh, we've looked at how we would have access through these properties. Again, they would look at having a shared driveway and they'd make a left in and a, or I'm sorry, a right in and a right out. 
And um, for the time being, they would need to do a U-turn if they need to go back westbound. Um, and again, through ANF's study, they said the number of trips here is not significant and they don't have a concern with U-turns occurring there. We've talked to the landowner to where the State Farm has proposed that if this vacant land here was to develop further with more office, we would limit that to about 5,000 or 6,000 square feet. Again, professional office. And in that scenario, we could potentially go to Board of Works and look at a break in the median. If they're willing to give that, we can get a left turn out so it doesn't require U-turns for further development there. And then on Olio, what we anticipate here, the, the north parcel here is pretty small. So we think the only way this would develop is it would have to combine with the property to the south here. And again, we would restrict as much as we can access to right in, right out, and even encourage if they wanted medical office that they could maybe get only access through the, the church property if that was an option. Um, so we've looked at this and feel that again, this is still the best use, highest and best use for this property going forward and are recommending approval. If you have any questions for staff, uh, the petitioner is here, he's not gonna present again, but if you have any questions I can't answer, he can make, also be available. Uh, questions with Tony? Uh, both in agreement with one route. Correct, yes. Will they be hooking up to HSC uh, so city sewers and everything? Um, yes, it's required as well as annexation. Okay, good. I had also mentioned maybe making sure that whatever rehab they do, updates, that that both both buildings or both houses look complementary to each other, like kind of like what we've done on 116th Street with the new development, it kind of looks complementary that, you know, so the petitioner was in agreement with that. Um, I don't know if they've, there's been any further discussion, but just so that it kind of looks like it all belongs together and it flows, color scheme, that kind of thing. Yeah, we've talked to the two petitioners about that as well with the access points and try to make sure that they, you, they work that way. It's obviously with new construction, easier to get those the new standards in place with working with existing homes and the building code allows the conversion. Um, we're, we're doing our best I can to enhance those when they re, when they come in to redevelop. Other questions? Not really a question, comment. Again, I'm, I'm still not thrilled to death with the whole concept of it. I, I'm not going to stand in the way if that's what council wants to do. Again, it still presents problems for me. I think that there does need to be a standard. I mean, we get accused of paying way too much attention to downtown and not in the outskirts of towns, et cetera, et cetera. And this is kind of an outlier area out there. Um, I, I think the guy's got a great business. I don't have any problem with the business there. I, I'm, I'm not thrilled to death. There is another option that they could do. They could actually go to the BZA and ask for a, 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 a variance, right? And what happens with that is that you get a house that now you're gonna give a variance for a C1 use, it's gonna be a real estate office and then if they turn around and sell it it reverts back to a house you know so it doesn't allow the zoning to go with it right so again that gives you flexibility i'm not really sure that's the way to go either but it's certainly options that they have um you know certainly if the will of the council is to let them move forward with this i'm not going to uh, stand in the way and, and do that i think tony's done a banner job in trying to get his arms around that particular area right as to what's going on but uh, i look at what projects greg o'heron's done which is what cecilia alluded to uh, down there, and those were, again, new construction, but there was buildings on there before. Granted, they were a little dilapidated, and, and but they could have taken those and tried to re-improve those and do that. Uh, we just need to be careful in this kind of stuff, in my opinion. And, and I think we do such a terrific job of, of really doing development around the city is that, is this what we want to be indicative once you get out of city center to allow? And um, I also worry about the way the front things look and make sure they look consistent and they're just going to continue to look like houses. So, you know, I guess that's okay sitting in a residential area, but, um, you know, overall, I think there's probably a better use for it. I think we could probably try to amass that land and have a better project all in all. But like I said, if the council wishes to move forward, because he does have a good business and I think he does a great job here in the city of Fishers, I won't stand in the way of that. That's, this is just the thing that happens with growth. And I think we've done a great job on 116th, what we've done doing the same thing on 126 it's the best use the price of the land is not residential anymore it is commercial and uh, small businesses um, entrepreneurs is what built this country we've got two entrepreneurs that want to locate in fishers and i think it's a great place for them and uh, it'll be a great location 
And I had some I had some questions last month, but I appreciate the efforts to answer some questions. And I'll, you know, if there's no other comments, I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. All right, motion made by Todd, second by Eric. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. One of uh, opposition. Okay. One opposed. Thank you. All right. Next is. 18050219. Good evening. For the record, Megan Schaefer with the Planning and Zoning Department. This item is for an annexation. This is Sharp Printing's new property located on the west side of Allisonville Road, south of 116th mm -hmm. Street. This item is before you for first and second reading in a public hearing. Um, staff does recommend that City Council hold the first combined first and second reading and a public hearing. All right, thank you. Uh, this is a public hearing. If there are members of the public that wish to speak, uh, if you come forward, state your name and address for the record. Uh, is there anyone from the public wishing to speak? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Questions, uh, council? I have first and second reading. Okay, first and second reading. Okay. Thank you, Megan. Um, item 19052019A. Uh, Larry Becker seeks to annex two lots totaling approximately 6.19 acres for two residential properties. This is generally located on the south side of 116th Street, east of Cumberland Road. Um, it is before you for first and second reading in a public hearing. Staff recommends that you can hold a combined first and second reading in a public hearing. Again, this is a public hearing. Are there, if there are members of the public that wish to speak, uh, come forward, state your name and address for the record. Are there any members wishing to speak? Seeing none, we will close the public hearing. Have first and second reading. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Pete. Item 20, 052019B. Good evening, for the record, Dale Davis with Planning and Zoning. Uh, the next item before you tonight is a set of amendments to our Nickel Plate District Code. Um, the Nickel Plate District Code is a form-based code um, adopted to uh, administer our downtown projects. And over the years, through expansion of the Nickel Plate Code and amendments, um, we've added some use-based language to the code. And that's not having the end result we were expecting it to. The amendments before you bring us back to a code that's more strictly form-based for removing language related to residential development to live-work development. Um, the live-work development is a good example that while the code contemplated the live-work being some <coughs> separate buildings with you know, a little bit of space to live, a little bit of space to work in it, the live-work took a completely different form and is now the ground floor units of the Spark Building. And that's better than anything we could have ever imagined. So in that thought process, we want to take ourselves out of uh, the use category and uh, through our waivers process, we still have the ability to build everything we're currently building. So the homes that are Gratison's building, if somebody else brought that in, we'd still be able to do that through the waivers process. And to get Gratison's project to the point that it's at, he already needed waivers. So I'll walk through some of the uh, bigger changes in the code. Um, the structure height, we're increasing the primary uh, minimum height for commercial structures. Um, that is being done because we have limited land in our downtown and we want to make the most of it. Um, one of the changes that removing use would have a bigger impact on is this masonry requirement. Um, right now, residential could use fiber cement. Um, this just puts everything in the 75% masonry. Now we do have material waivers, so if you have a residential project, you can still bring that to the Nickel Plate Review Committee. Um, and for example, most of Gratison's units are using uh, fiber cement, so something like that with masonry on some units, fiber cement on others, certainly something that could, that could still be discussed. Um, other language, as we've expanded south um, and have more residential project or product, we want to uh, force more of an alley loaded product on the Morgan Meadows area so that we can establish an alley between Meadows and uh, Lantern 
and also get driveways off of Lantern, reduce our conflict points, um, bring the buildings up close to the street. So that's why we're limiting where the garage doors can be placed. Uh, point of clarification that you don't need or, uh, ground uh, landscaping around these zero lot line buildings. And some of the bigger uh, administrative changes is that we're going to now require all structures to go to the Medical Plate Review Committee. There was previously a path for each zoning district where a structure would not have to go to the Nickel Plate Review Committee. Um, in keeping with the way we work throughout the rest of the community with a uh, PUD committee, where anything in a PUD has to go to the committee, we're doing the same with the Nickel Plate that just make it much cleaner. We also want to adopt findings after the Nickel Plate Committee makes a determination so that all these waivers are documented in a form uh, beyond our staff report. So with that, uh, this did receive a unanimous favorable recommendation from Plan Commission, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Well, I, I do remember Joe Nixon was there at the Planning Commission. He came uh, before the Planning Commission. His, his concern was, um, I think, about the form-based code and what would be allowed. Um, and part of what we talked about was that uh, with most all of the PUD uh, you know, projects that there's a PUD review of what uh, the architectural um, the architectural design would be like. There's input provided for there. I think his, his desire was to have it be approved on the front end, but I think what we tried to say was, you know, we're, we're basically asking for the same process here. In fact, probably had more concern about uh, our downtown and nickel plate and that we we wanted to have that ability to review what was being designed. So I think that was what we ultimately got comfortable with at the Planning Commission. I don't know if Brad or Pete want to say anything more about that. No, that's, that's what happened. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve. Motion to approve by Pete, second by? Second. John, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> Very good, thank you. Thank you, Dale. Thank you. Um, Let's see, item 21-052019-C. Uh, good evening again, Dale Davis for the record. Uh, this is a right-of-way vacation for a strip of right-of-way that will be in front of the proposed AMP West building uh, across from what our new fire station is going to be. Um, with our tightened uh, streetscape requirements in the nickel plate and the buildings <laughs> being able to be right up on the back of the sidewalk, we had more right-of-way than we needed in this location, so we're allowing them to uh, vacate this to go back to the lot so they have a little more buildable area. Uh, there is a hearing needed on this one as well. Oh, this is public hearing. Okay, thank you. Um, sorry. Okay, this is public hearing. If there are members of the public wishing to speak, uh, if you'd come forward, state your name and address for the record. If seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. I'll make a Question. motion to oh. suspend the rules and approve on first reading. Motion by Pete to suspend the rules. Second by Todd. All in favor of suspending the rules? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Oh. Opposed? No. Okay. Make a motion to approve. Second. Motion to uh, approve by Pete. Second by Todd. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Very good. Thank you, Dale. Twenty two zero five two zero one nine D. Good evening again, Dale Davis. This uh, next right of way vacation for you is for the First Internet Bank SPF 15 project. These are all of our old city uh, rights of way. We have utility relocation plans in place for all of them, and they're underway. Um, this one also requires a hearing, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, again, public hearing. If there are any members of the public wishing to speak, please come forward, state your name and address for the record. Any members wishing to speak? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. I'll make a motion to suspend the rules. Yeah. Motion to suspend the rules by Pete, second by? Second. Uh, Cecilia, thank you, Cecilia. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Make, make a motion to approve. Motion to approve by Pete, second by? <laughs> Cecilia, <laughs> thank you, Cecilia, for saving us. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Yeah. I think we're getting a little delirious. 
Uh, item 23, 052019E. You again, Dale? It is me again. <laughs> Uh, this is a, right, a utility and right-of-way easement that is located uh, adjacent to the railroad tracks at North Street uh, where Browning has proposed their uh, new project. This, um, the utilities in this area are being relocated as part of the north and south developments, so we would like to uh, vacate this easement so that Browning can develop this portion of the land. Uh, happy to answer any questions, and this one also requires a hearing. Okay. Uh Again, this is a public hearing. If there are members of the uh, public wishing to speak, please come forward, state your name and address for the record. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Motion Any? to oh. suspend the rules and approve on first reading. Motion made by Pete, second by Eric. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We good? Motion to approve. Motion, motion to approve by Pete, second by Eric. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Can all abstain on that one too? Okay. Extension by David. Okay. Okay. Um, item 24052019F. Good evening once again. Tony Bogato, Director of Planning and Zoning. This item before you is for a text amendment for Fisher's Marketplace. This is to remove a requirement for some um, entry features, but just to give you a quick aerial Fisher's Marketplace off 37. 131st Street going north. Uh, this is where the Walmart um, neighborhood grocery market is as well as other retail tenants and restaurants and banks. There's a requirement in the PUD to have an entry feature at each in intersection entrance and here's the one at 131st Street. Um, but with the improvements in the roundabouts to 237 uh, and the interchange coming for the on and off ramps, those uh, features are going to have to be removed and the amount of land left uh, for this location is, is very minimal. And so the city would, um, if we wanted to keep them, one, we would also pay for the new features, but in reviewing the land with Thompson Thrift, we don't think there's a, a good viewing point for a new feature and it's not worth the city's expense in, in putting them back in. And the same thing at 135th Street, this is a smaller one, kind of in front of, it's in front of that Verizon building, but with the improvements there, it would need to be removed and demoed. And so again, the city would have, if we wanted to keep these features somewhere else on the property, we would have to pay for the reload, pay for new construction. But with this uh, additional right away here, there's gonna be very little land in front of the building that would get built there. So staff at this point is, has initiated the text amendment on behalf of Thompson Thrift to say that uh, we're, we're okay with um, not having these features. We have discussed with them about adding maybe a secondary monument sign on 37, so those tenants do have some visibility but other than that, we would recommend that these, this uh, part of the PUD be removed. And with that, staff, um, we'll answer any questions. Plan Commission did recommend approval. Questions of council? No, I'll no. make a motion to approve. Second. Uh, motion uh, to approve by Pete, second by Eric. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Tony. Item 25, any unfinished business, new business? No. Very good. Item 26, uh, community comments. If there are members of uh, the public that wish to make a comment, you can have three minutes to uh, if you state your name and address for the record. I see one here. Come on forward, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Again, you'll be uh, given three minutes to, in which to speak. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Jay Powell. I live in Bartolino Drive. Uh, in eight days, I've been a resident of Fishers for four years. And I uh, just want to share with you a thought I've had for a long, long time. And it's ironic that this morning, the first news I saw was about a police officer being killed, number 18, in Auburn, Georgia. And this has gotten to be a situation that uh, we need to have some kind of way of recognizing what these men and women do on a day-to-day -day basis as far as giving their lives for the service of their communities. I have an idea I want to share with anybody who would like to work with me along that line. It would be along the lines of a charitable type of a fund set up by city council to be available and distributed to the police and the fire department personnel in the community on a way that's being done in, in a fashion that uh, uh, I think would bring some settlement of pain to those that are injured so much by this, the loved ones, of course, and it may even bring some recognition to the council. 
as it could be the spearhead of something that uh, other groups of government in locations like Fishers or elsewhere throughout the state or the country could pick up on and do as well. Primary reason would be to give honor, respect, and gratitude to these men and women who put their lives on the line every day for our protection. And I'm not aware of what your procedures are as to what you go through. I've, this is my first meeting with this council. I see your numbers and allocations and so forth. So my guess is you have a lead up to proposals being made formal. And if anybody would like to work with me along the lines of uh, this kind of project, I'd be more than willing to be able to uh, share some time along that line. Thank you, Mr. Powell. Uh, I know David had a comment. Just, uh, I'll work with you. Just, uh, we'll exchange numbers after this and uh, we'll, we'll get together. Stay here after this, you say? No, well, we'll just, yes. after the meeting, we'll just exchange numbers and get together. Okay. One other thing I was gonna to mention to you, Mr. Powell, that we started, and really, I think most of the council actually has participated in this, but we set up a club, uh, it's called 50 Club of Fishers. Um, it's common, I guess, in, in, in a number of cities, but it is intended to provide death and disability benefits uh, to police and firefighters uh, within our community. Uh, hopefully, it, you know, there's never an incident that requires it, but uh, we, in fact, uh, have, uh, I think there are nearly 200 participants uh, that, that are part of the organization. Uh, and again, m many of the council members individually have done that. So I would also like to invite you to an event. I think it's on Thursday. I'm unfortunately going to be out of town, but I'll uh, see you afterwards. And I'll give you more information because that organization exists. And that would be another avenue for you to, to participate and show your appreciation. How is the information about that known or recognized with others in the community? We're looking for a PR person. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> no, in, in all seriousness, no, there is a, a website that's been created. I, I, you know, honestly, it's, it's relatively new, so we're still getting the word out. Um, but uh, it'd be a, a, a great thing for you to be involved with. What time is that going to be, you say, on Thursday? I think it's from 5 to 7. Th oh. This one's actually going to be hosted by the police, uh, and, and there'll be a tour of their new station. Um, of course, you know, they're, they're active with us and supportive, and, and we support them equally. Well, I'm just thinking of a simple way that there are fun, a fund could be established and divided between the foundations for both the police and the firefighters. No, and that, Great idea. And yeah. the city council would be the ones recognized as making that available. Okay. And it wouldn't cost the taxpayer one more penny than what it's costing us now. Thank you, Mr. Powell. We'll, we'll, we'll see you have, afterwards. Rich, if I may add, oh, there, yeah, there, is a, there is a Fisher's Police Foundation that has been formed, actually was formed back when uh, Chief Kale was our, our uh, police chief. And um, we have, a, we have uh, law enforcement people as well as civilians that are part of that. Uh, that foundation that, that do things for our police officers that are in need. I'm on, I'm on that board as, as a council member. So there are some things out there and uh, we have a number of uh, volunteers that do a lot for that organization. You need a PR person, this yeah. sounds like. <laughs> 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 no, but it is ironic that today of all days, uh, I've thought a long time about this and uh, long and hard to come and share this with you people. And there the news was that number 18 had been killed in the line of duty in Auburn, Georgia last night. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay, thanks for your yeah. time. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jocelyn Vare, 13873 Carolina Courts and Fishers. Um, just a suggestion um, about a event that's on the community calendar for tomorrow morning. It's called Council Connect. And it says, these monthly meetings will allow residents an opportunity to ask questions or voice concerns directly to council leadership. So I'm taking this moment of community comment to share with you. I think this is a remarkable opportunity and I thank you for opening it up, but um, residents don't know about it. So my suggestion is to uh, use tools in the arsenal of the um, communities communication tool box to uh, share that with residents so they have an opportunity to participate. I think it's a well-kept secret. Thank you. Thank you. We'll work to improve on that. Are there any other members of the audience that wish to comment? 
right, seeing none. Make a motion to adjourn. Motion to, motion to adjourn. Thank you.